This is where the big changes were made yesterday, giving the Lewis higher priority and cutting down on the number of buses going through College Green. I'm moving freely around Dublin's Georgian squares, homing in on the final destination, while Ethna and Kevin are dealing with the new system outside Trinity College. How are they getting on? We're right beside the Lewis track here, just outside Trinity College, coming up to College Green. We're in loads of buses. It has taken us 10 minutes uh, to get from uh, Westmoreland Street to here. It is gridlock. This is when it gets difficult as a commuter. You're in the Bermuda Triangle there, are you? Yeah, it's funny, actually, just coming up to the Trinity stop, that's where the, the lights kicked in. But then, actually, once we got past those lights, We've gone right through the exactly the Bermuda Triangle, wherever College Green and all that, and it was absolutely fine. Arriving at Lisa so it's been Street very Bridge. smooth, in fairness. Right. Forty odd minutes later. So I have time to pay for parking at the machine and walk back to Leeson Street Bridge to see who's the winner. <laughs> Good to see you, Kevin. You're second. I'm second. Yeah, second. so the bus wasn't too bad. The bus itself wasn't too bad. It was about 45 minutes on the bus. But again, I, I could have walked, you know. In the same period? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Where kilometers. was the big problem? Uh, definitely um, Westmoreland Street. The Bermuda. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> Edna, you made it. Well done. We oh made it. God, you're last. You're you absolutely lost. last. Just about, I just I'm not, I can't believe that. I really thought I was going to win. It's Monday morning, quarter past eight, lashing rain, freezing cold, middle of winter, and the car won. The car took 43 minutes, Kevin was 15 minutes later, and Ethna with a longer walk, a good minute after that. I think it's time to ceremoniously call this contest over. <laughs> Richard Downs, Ethan O'Brien and Kevin Burns there. Now, Dublin City Council had confirmed this morning that City Manager Owen Keegan would be joining us this evening to discuss transport in Dublin, but that commitment was subsequently withdrawn. We are, however, joined by Conor Faulkner of the AA and by Dublin City Councillor Paddy Smith, a member of the Council's Strategic Policy Committee on Transportation. Um, Paddy Smith, I know you're a cyclist yourself. You could probably do that journey in 20 minutes, but for a lot of people, it's, it's a car or public mm -hmm. transport. And despite the fact that the City Council's policy is to favour public transport over the private motorist, mm -hmm. if our uh, little test is anything to go by, the car is still king. Well, we're on a journey, a long <laughs> journey, okay, to, to, to basically uh, de-emphasise uh, the, the amount that we rely on the private motor car. Okay, so we, you know, we have various modes of transport, three there. Additionally, you have cycling, as you mentioned, and the, and the foot. Now, the latter modes of transport, uh, uh, including the, the tram and the bus, are orders of magnitude more efficient uh, at moving people around a city, uh, particularly at peak times. But okay, slower. So, but, no, well, as, as it stands, because, because as counterintuitive as it may seem, we still uh, uh, give a, a disproportionate amount of space, either through laneways or parking, to the private motor car. Okay? Easily the most inefficient way of moving people around a city. So a child could tell you that if you do that, you're going to have gridlock. And yet we have had all the changes in College Green. We have had the favouring of, of, well, the banning of cars from, from uh, certain areas, mm -hmm. the favouring of public transport. And it's still slower, and people aren't going to give up their cars. Yeah, and, it's and it's, it, there's, there's still work to be done there. There's still probably buses still that need to, be, need to be rerouted, possibly taxis as well. Yeah, I mean, we have a serious capacity issue, particularly at that point. And if we are going to get, get, get any yield from the, the hundreds of millions of euros that have been invested in, in the Lewis, yes, something is going to need to change. OK, uh, Conor Faulkner, um, the answer is more... Uh, clamp down on cars? Well, the answer has to be public transport and it has to be to favour public transport, but it's fundamentally the wrong analysis to say that you achieve that by frustrating car use. If you set out and say, right, if I vandalise car use, I will by osmosis make public transport better, then I think you'll get it wrong. And I think if you want to see how that turns out wrong, you need look no further than Dublin City or perhaps Galway or some other Irish cities. It's been a long-term problem. But I think if you look at your little uh, uh, video piece there, for me, the tragedy for the city is that everybody lost. I mean, 43 minutes is 
Paddy points out he'd cycle it in half the time, you could certainly have walked it. Mm -hmm. The whole city is losing because of the inefficiency of the transport infrastructure. But you just said vandalising car use. I mean, the car was actually the quickest, so it's not vandalised enough. Well, well, if you the, where, where the buses were primarily held up there was, in, was on College Green, and the private cars are gone out of there. I mean, as your video made clear, um, the, the, the car was meandering around Judge, um, George and Squares away from the congested area mm -hmm. and got there faster. So uh, I think it's just a misconception to say, right, we will solve this problem by making car use difficult. But I, I would probably agree with Dublin City Council in that we have got to make substantial investments in public transport and we've never done that before. Whatever about, and I'm a big fan of the Lewises and always have been, but three Lewis lines in Dublin's capital city is a pretty poor return for this debate going on the last 20-25 years. We haven't begun to invest properly in public transport infrastructure. Stack us up against a continental European city and you see that very clearly. Okay, but part of the investment, I mean, there's no point investing unless you give priority to public transport, which has a knock-on effect on, on motorists. Oh, oh yeah, and that's, to some degree, that's a circular argument, but it's not one that we've resisted. I mean, if you look at, at public transport uh, um, priority measures in Dublin City, Paddy says a child could tell you it's got to be done. There's, there's absolutely no doubt that we cannot sustainably thrive in Dublin City or in Galway or in Cork mm. unless we dramatically increase the provision for public transport. No sensible voice in the debate is arguing against that. However, you don't get there if you simply bask in the comfortable fiction that the source of your problem is self-indulgent, lazy motorists who would take, should take public transport but just don't want to because they prefer to have a nice cup of coffee. But we don't have the space to share it with everybody who wants to drive into the city centre or drive through the city centre for, mm -hmm. for no good reason when they could be taking a more circuitous route. So we have to prioritise space. We have to reallocate, just like we did on the North Keys. And what happened? It means that, that bus, uh, uh, bus times on the North Keys, what was heretofore the, the, the biggest pinch point, the biggest uh, cause of delay in the city for bus users, uh, has now dramatically de decreased uh, transit times. And, and, and just by, by taking one lane away from motorists, and, get, and giving it to the okay. 14 uh, times as many bus users who use okay. it. And they, and they are now pinched in College Green because we still can't get the quart into the pint mug. And that wasn't a, a universal victory, by the way, because congestion has bubbled up elsewhere in the city. And nobody wants that. I mean, nobody has a vested interest in congestion. Nobody wins. Mm -hmm. And I think, by and large, most of us would be in agreement around this that we have to invest in public transport. But... We, we cannot simply pretend that, that making car use difficult will magically achieve that. Well, I think concentrate no, on no the constructive properly measures. City should a car be able to go across the city and beat public in, transport? In, no, pro shouldn't in no properly run city should the bus service be held up by a rival public transport mode for 20 minutes at a commuting well, Monday well, either. Yeah. So I don't, I don't I think we can up, just paint it as a car yeah. being the source of the problem. Okay, can here. I just pick up on a point there? No mm. properly run city. Who's running the city? Well, we essentially well, well, no, 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 well, yeah, no, fair, fair point. But, but for generations, we have emphasised the private motor car, and that's for, for various reasons. Okay, we we we, we have badly, or like many cities have, but but practically every other well-run city in, in the world is now devehicularising their city centre at least. Okay, they're going from from a car-centric uh, motor transfer to, to more sustainable modes. Okay, and, and, and wherever it's done, whether it's it's uh, in New York City with Times Square being pedestrianised or the pedestrianisation of, of Norwich city centre, wherever you go, you have vested interests. You have you have the, the flat earth society saying saying that the, the, the sky is going to fall in and it's going to be gridlock. But and, on the other and, hand, and, and, on the other hand, you have people saying the Lewis is the answer, and despite all the evidence to the contrary, and despite the fact that buses which carry more people sure. are are being uh, penalised in favour of the Lewis, which carries less people. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we clearly need to reorganise, certainly, the pinch point uh, on College Green. And, and there is a plan in place. Okay? Buses will need to be uh, re-diverted. Taxis will definitely need, need to be re-diverted. And the private motor car will have to take a more circuitous route. Um, well, I don't disagree. And I think we have to back Lewis. Nobody's going to take the train tracks out of College Green, so the buses will have to move. I think there's an element of inertia there preventing people imagining that, but I don't think it need be a bad thing. Yeah. But I would say, generally, we all agree the city has to move by public transport and not take the public car and not take the private car into the centre. You achieve that by providing good quality public transport. Nobody ever needed to be forced to take a good system. But if you can't provide a good system, mm -hmm. then just pushing the cars out hollows out the city centre, doesn't result in anybody winning, and fundamentally stops you getting the problem right if you keep pretending that the source of the problem is motorists who well, won't change their to habits. A circularity in logic okay, again. Well, with that, with that circularity, we we'll leave it there. But thank you very much, Conor Falcon and Paddy Smith. Thank, thank you both you. for joining us. Miriam. Well, that's it from us for tonight. On Thursday, we're going to have an exclusive report on sepsis, the silent killer, which takes more lives in Ireland than breast, 
bowel and prostate cancer combined and yet little is known about it. For tonight though, from Dave and myself, from everyone on the Primetime team, thank you very much for watching and Ihi Uruguay was the first country in the world to 